Let's now move to 3D scene flow. In practice, 2D motion estimation in the image domain is often not sufficient. We live in 3D space. The vehicles drive in 3D space, in physical 3D space. Hence, we must estimate and predict motion, for example, of other traffic participants in 3D. And this is what is called scene flow. 6D Vision nominates for the German Future Prize. The process was developed by Daimler and helps vehicles to recognize possible collision hazards within 200 milliseconds. The researchers utilize a stereo camera system which will enable spatial vision in future vehicles. In addition, we can also see and measure movements and thus recognize hazards posed by vehicles coming from the side or moving pedestrians ahead of time. The special aspect of the system is the ability to recognize moving objects before they enter the driving corridor and thus the danger zone. Furthermore, the system can also determine the direction of motion and the speed of the identified objects. 6D Vision will open up a new range of options for driver assistance systems in the future. This will enable us to avoid accidents, especially in the inner city. One of the uh, first paper that described the term scene flow was the one from Vedula et al. that stated scene flow is a dense three-dimensional vector field defined for each point on every surface in the scene. In other words, we want to measure for every visible point in the scene the 3D location of that point and the 3D velocity where that point is moving in 3D space. The scene flow is the instantaneous 3D motion of every point X, Y, Z on every surface in the scene. And optical flow is the 2D projection of the scene flow into the image as illustrated here. This is a figure I took from this uh, paper from Vedula et al. Where we have a surface at time t and a surface at time t plus one. And this point in 3D space is moving from here to there physically and so its optical flow is is moving from here it's actually the motion field it's moving from here to there so again um, if we are making if we are measuring scene flow just from images we have the same issue with optical flow that we can't measure the motion field so we are only measuring apparent motion and that's also true for the scene flow in their original work, Vedula et al. compute 3D scene flow from 2D optical flow estimates. So they first compute optical flow, and from that optical flow, they derive constraints for 3D scene flow. But later works, of course, estimate scene flow more directly from images using the brightness constancy assumption, basically extending the horn schunk approach to more images in order to estimate scene flow directly, similar to the von Schunk algorithm for optical flow. How many observations are required for estimating scene flow? Recall that in the optical flow case, we needed two consecutive images as input. So how many images do we need in the case of scene flow? Well, to estimate scene flow, we require at least four images, namely a stereo image pair at time t and the stereo image pair at time t plus one. Or we require two images, an image at time t and an image at time t plus one um, that comprise not only RGB information, but also depth information. So if we have an RGBD sensor directly, then we don't need to include the stereo estimation problem. But this here is really the common setup um, in self-driving, where we have a stereo camera and now we want to find correspondences across all of these four images. You can see this little corner of the house rooftop that is now found in all of these four images. And if you can find the correspondences in all of these four images, then, well, we know the 3D location of this point at time t because we have the stereo correspondence of this calibrated stereo rig. But we also have the optical flow and we have the stereo 
correspondence at time t plus one, which means we have the 3D location at time t plus one. So we have the correspondence of two 3D points, which is exactly our definition of scene flow. Hence, scene flow effectively combines the problems of stereo and optical flow. And a common representation that's used for estimating scene flow from images is the pixel location in the reference camera, which is the left camera in the first time step in this case. The optical flow um, towards the next time step, which is uh, represented as UV displacement, and the disparity in the first and in the second frame. And note that this is a full description of the scene flow, which has six degrees of freedom, as we have two degrees of freedom for the pixel location, two degrees of freedom for the optical flow, and two degrees of freedom for the two disparities. The naive approach for computing scene flow is to combine separately computed optical flow and stereo results. But that's suboptimal because, for example, the optical flow estimate cannot exploit that we know something about the structure from the stereo measurements, which is, of course, very useful when estimating correspondences for optical flow, where we have this hard problem, this unconstrained 2D search problem. So a better approach is to reason jointly about flow, stereo, maybe even segmentation and rigid motions. And here is one such approach where you can see the jointly inferred disparity map and optical flow field. So there is really this is really a, a scene flow estimation algorithm, but we are visualizing the scene flow here because it's hard to visualize a 60 um, quantity. We are visualizing it here using a projection into the image in terms of the disparity and the optical flow. And now here, this is one of the state-of-the-art methods. Of course, now the deep learning methods also dominate 3D scene flow estimation on the leaderboards. In this case, the KIDI evaluation, which is linked here at the bottom. This is currently ranked first on the KIDI scene flow benchmark. And the there's a recurring idea that has been exploited before deep learning and now also in a deep learning era, which is the fact that the scene is typically composed, at least in self-driving, of a number of rigidly moving objects. And we can exploit that fact, we can integrate that into our algorithm and get more robust estimates of the scene flow that way. So in this particular case, this is a paper from Young and Ramanan called Learning to Segment Rigid Motions from Two Frames. Um, in this case, um, the, uh, uh, the caption here uh, roughly describes the flow of the algorithm. We detect and estimate rigid motions in three steps. First, depth and optical flow are computed using off-the-shelf networks M. This is leading to depth and optical flow. Here, really computed separately. And camera motion is estimated by apipolar geometry given two frames, as we've already discussed here in this lecture, in uh, lecture number seven for visual odometry. Um, then rigidity cost, map, rigidity cost maps and rectified scene flow are computed um, and fed into a two-stream network that produces segmentation masks of a rigid background and an arbitrary number of rigidly moving instances. So it's decomposing the scene into its individual rigidly moving components. And once you have that, then you can fit rigid transformations for the background component and all rigid moving instances all cars separately to update their depth and 3D scene flow. And then this leads to the final result. Great, that's all for today. Let me briefly summarize this lecture. We've seen that stereo uses two images captured at the same time to infer disparity or um, equivalently depth and compared to other sensors, stereo vision is cheap and passive. However, stereo requires processing and ac the accuracy of the stereo estimation procedure depends on the depth and also the textureless of the scene.
When using block matching, we face a trade-off with respect to the window size, as we have seen. Free space approaches convert depth maps then into bird's eye view occupancy maps, which are more directly useful for self-driving tasks such as path planning and collision avoidance. Optical flow estimates the apparent motion in the image domain. And in contrast to stereo, optical flow cannot exploit apipolar geometry. Instead, we must infer two variables per pixel. So it's an ill post problem and we need a regularizer such as the smoothness constraints introduced by the horn shunk algorithm. Scene flow estimates 3D motion, hence combining stereo and optical flow. Thanks.